All right, so what we're gonna do today when it comes to this uh, video is we're going to create a small, simple mission together uh, by combining everything that we have seen in the first four tutorials. And we will basically get a very functional mission at the end of this video, uh, which is somewhat the baseline for any uh, sort of uh, basic to intermediate kind of mission without any mods or without anything like that. Uh, you should already have all that you need to create a very basic um, and, uh, you know, a, a campaign mission that actually works. And you can just combine events and stuff like that to make it more complicated if you want. So let's have a look. I, I put down in, in this notepad file a bunch of uh, things that we are going to be looking at to get today. So we are going to start off by getting some terrain, you know, just very simple terrain so that we can put down a bunch of bases for the players. Then, of course, place down the actual buildings and then we'll cover the mission settings screen. We will set up these things over there. And once we're done with that, we will go ahead and look at the events and the conditions. And what we basically want to do is just a simple destroy the enemy mission. So destroy their base. This is going to be actually, we will ignore the units, just the base. And we will just for, for the flavor, we will add a secondary win option. If you just capture a building, you win. That's it. You don't have to kill the base. You can just capture one building. And that's it. And uh, again, to add some flavor uh, about the mission loss condition, uh, if I can see it, uh, yeah, so it, we will have an ally on this map just so that I can showcase how to get allies as well. And if they lose their starport, then we will fail the mission. So we will not stick with the classic lose your base while it's over type of thing. We will uh, have something else instead. So we will also have a bunch of uh, other condition, uh, other events here just to like combine everything we've learned so far. We will have an interval for reinforcements. So once you have a refinery, you will get a bunch of reinforcements, but only a certain amount of time so that we can actually see how the interval uh, event works from, if you remember from the previous tutorial series, I, be I believe it was episode four. Uh, so yeah, you know, we're gonna have this list in mind when we create the mission. You can pause if you wanna look uh, at it more in depth on what we are planning to do, what we will go ahead, I'll move this to my other screen and I will just simply get going. So first thing you wanna do, obviously go ahead, start a new map. You can choose your tile set. I think I double clicked by mistake. Let me do it again. So you can choose your tile set. These are uh, tile sets from Red Alert, I believe. This is from Tiberian Dawn, actually. Uh, so you can obviously use those. You can use Giddy Prime as well. Uh, let's actually do that, I guess. Or maybe no, let's just keep it simple. But there is Giddy Prime and you can use it. There are some other tile sets that do not appear here. This is the uh, Dune Master version. Uh, I believe Grand Mods has more or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure. But you can find uh, more tile sets if you look for it on the forums or on our Discord server. So let's just go with the absolute basic one, BGBS. That's the most basic one you can ever get. Now for the map size, I'll just use 96 by 96. So although this is, will be way too big for this very simple tutorial, but I just wanted to make sure we have enough space. So, as I said, uh, and as it was written on the file, we are starting with the bases. So very simple, um, very simple layout here. I don't really care about it that much. I'll just put some rocks here. This is going to be our allies uh, base. It's gonna be very small. We will be starting with our commando units here. And this is going to be our buildable area. And uh, this is one way you can do it. Uh, I sometimes do it like this. I, I put down the rocks before uh, putting other, uh, you know, refining elements like, I don't know, cliffs. You know, I don't necessarily finish this. Uh, where is it? Rocks, rock cliff. I don't necessarily uh, add this kind of stuff yet. I just put down like the main layout 
Then I decide where the enemy base will be. In our case, it's going to be very close because I want this to be as quickly as possible. I want to showcase everything. So I'll just put it here as well. And once you have this very basic, like where the bases are going to be, you can actually go ahead and either put down the rocks or you just directly smooth the terrain depending on what you want. Now remember, shift click and it's going to do it up to the point where you clicked. Control Z if you don't if you're not happy with that. For example, I was not because I wanted to be done uh, like for the whole piece. And I'll just do it to the corner here. It starts from right and goes uh, towards the left. So it's uh, clockwise. Got to keep that in mind if you want this to go faster. Now over here, let's quickly go ahead and use some cliffs as well, just because I want to show you how you can still use the smoothing feature with the cliffs, although it's a bit more difficult and you have to adjust it a bit. So let's just add a few cliffs just for demonstration. And I will close it with the corresponding piece, which in our case is this one. This is the closing piece. You'll get used to it eventually if you haven't done it before. Uh, these are some closing cliffs, cliff pieces right here. Uh, so right now this looks totally terrible and you will be probably wondering how are we fixing this because if you go ahead at this moment and do, let's say, um, this, or rather this, it's going to look totally terrible. And this is obviously not completed, it does not have the end piece, but this one has and it still looks bad. So we need to adjust that. First of all, let's close the, the missing piece. Uh, if I can see it, yep, it's down there, it's up there. And now uh, we have the cliff part done. What we need to do is to make sure that the terrain, uh, oops, well, never don't do that. Don't double click like that on uh, it's actually what it's done is it filled it with whatever it was selected so if i double click it can fill this whole thing with concrete which could be nice you know this is definitely a good feature but just be careful with that you have control z anyway in case you screw up uh, like that so what do you want to make sure when you when you're uh preparing the terrain for the smoothing feature the one that does it automatically you want to make sure it has this uh, this natural uh, uh, angle here so you don't want stuff like this like as it was before because it, it it won't do a good job at connecting those so you want to keep it as simple as possible next to the edge that's going to to get uh, the automated smoothing and you can just simply go ahead and experiment with it so let's try ahead and see how it looks right now see it looks actually perfect uh, you might probably get stuff like, uh, let's see, like this. This will probably not work. And the SC, this will not work. So you ha you just go ahead and remove it. Uh, let's experiment something else. This will also not work. And there is a very, very good reason why this won't work. Uh, it's It cannot, uh, it does not have enough rock uh, tiles to convert to edge tiles. So it, to fix stuff like this, let's say you really want this uh, this additional rock here and you don't want to scrap it. You don't want to just have it like this because, you know, you just want some extra here. You can still do that, but just make sure it's a uh, it's a two by two. Or, uh, so stuff like this, it's not going to work. Stuff like this also not going to work you have to make sure that it's a square sort of that's two by two so i can actually go ahead with this and quite prolong it for, for quite some time um see again it has to be two by two everywhere give me a second here and now it works. You just have to make sure you give it enough tiles uh, to convert them to edges. It's very important. So, but anyway, you can just very easily experiment with this. You can make uh, make it look pre-natural. You don't have to smooth it by hand. If you take your time and you know you you play around with this, it can look pretty well, and you don't have to 
because the manual way of doing stuff like this is let's say I have this piece of stuff here and I have to, I would have to go over here to rock border and I'd have to take these and put them myself but this takes time and is annoying and for a beginner it might not seem obvious like these small pieces can be somewhat misleading uh, I remember they were for me when I started uh, on Shia Lud, the very old tool so you can take your time you can do this but you you essentially don't necessarily need it I know some people like CM I believe he likes to do it by by hand I totally hate doing it by hand uh, because it just takes so much time and you don't have to do it by hand if you uh, if you build it properly beforehand so the auto smoothing will works pretty okay if you build it uh, the right way so I just showed you how to build it uh, let's go ahead and just quickly smooth this out with no no cliffs for this because it just adds up more time and we want things to be as fast as possible right now now the next thing you want to add is uh, probably some spice or some rocks like you want some sand rocks uh, if I can find it you can see stuff today there we are so the you know just add some cliffs and stuff like that to make your map look better and to not be completely open because you might not want that or maybe you would it depends on your tastes well, we're just very quickly adding some uh, some stuff to just make it look uh, like a, s a slightly bit better but we are not gonna be focusing on stuff like this now uh, another trick you can do if you wanna add stuff like this uh, a bit quicker is you can open the tile set and you can actually select pieces like this and some of them are already arranged in a pretty good way so you can take advantage of that like this uh, oops if you can do it better than me like with the selection so you know you can combine them like this you can speed up the process a little bit or what you also can do is go ahead open map open an existing map and just copy paste terrain from there this works as well uh, how do you copy paste you're gonna ask you just go ahead select select a piece of a uh, piece of land and there you go now you might want to control C this and control V I believe if you are doing it from another map file uh, because it's not gonna stick but control V will will fix it I hope I'm not wrong about this uh, I don't want to try it now because I have to save this map and all that but I'm pretty sure that's how it works because I've been using it uh, a bunch of times uh, okay so we have the bases like the I mean the terrain for the bases you want to add some spice obviously because you want to harvest uh, stuff on the map you can add it like this manually just put down spice or you can draw a circle this is our way you can do it or not a circle necessarily but a shape like this and then double click and it's gonna fill that whole region with spice uh, this does work with uh, thick spice as well so let's say I got this shape right here and I want to fill this whole thing with thick spice double click and there you go it's all filled this is a nice fast way to get spice going might not look the best depends on how you how you build it it could look pretty okay this is one fast way to get that and you obviously want to come back to structures and put down very importantly a, a worm spawner at least one needs to be present on the map at all times uh if you want this to run it's not going to run uh, without a worm and it, this uh, program is not even gonna save it see you must place at least one worm spawner now it will let you save but that uh, that error is uh, is bad so the game requires you to have at least one worm spawner on any map now there are two possibilities here you don't want this uh, let's say you don't want the worm because you hate worms you can just put it on a rock tile just like that and it's not gonna spawn worms cannot spawn on rocks on the default tile sets at least so you're good to go you just did this it's not gonna spawn you just got rid of it uh, there's a certain scenario in which this could bite us in the ass 
and that is when you are using buildings and bases and AI for all the eight players including the sandworm faction which is this so when all of this is used all all of these sides including the sandworm side so this is the one that actually controls the sandworm so when this side has an AI and is actually used on the map this can become a problem but we're not talking about that right now uh, we will talk about that in another video and how you can go around that but again just 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 put it there if you if you don't want the worm now what you probably definitely want are spice blooms because this is gonna run out if you don't so just add a bunch of spice blooms you know take your time I'm just gonna add a lot of them just for fun you can use these as well if you want they are uh, they are not infinite so it's like an interval somewhat they will only uh, respawn for like 5 times, 10 times, 25 times and stuff like that. If you want to use those, you can definitely use those as well. So let's go ahead and quickly put down some buildings. Our allies will be the mercenaries, obviously. And we're going to give them a pretty familiar setup. Sure, you can recognize where this is coming from. Uh, but just for fun, we will give them some more stuff. So we will give them a uh, light factory here, a barracks up here, and two refineries. Let's just keep it simple. And always check the power down here. It's saying 91% for this faction, for the mercenaries. Uh, see, it's selected here. So for the mercenaries, it's 91%. We don't want them to be low power, so we will we will add uh, two more wind traps, and now it's one hundred forty six percent. That's okay. We can stick with that. Now you might be tempted to add units from down here to give them some starting units like this, let's say, but you have to keep this in mind. If you do it like this, these units are gonna be on guard mode, and they are just going to sit here and not be used for attacks or they will not move essentially unless some some enemy unit clum, comes close to them and then their uh, guard range uh, is engaged so again this is not the best way to give them units for the start we will do that with an event which is much better and will uh, will allow the ai to uh, use those units for whatever he thinks he needs them so this is going to be our ally for us. As I said, we want, we are not starting with an MCV. So we're just going to start next to our allies base. We're going to get some tanks here. Get two siege tanks. And uh, we will get, uh, where is it? An engineer. And now, so the Harkonnen will be our enemy. We'll, we will ignore this uh, small rock for now because we're coming down here. Just, let's just quickly put down the enemy base. Just a bunch of wind traps and a light factory and a refinery. That's all I want because it, it just has to be a very quick mission. So we don't want to we don't want to do a lot of things. And just to prove my point from previously, we are going to be giving them two siege tanks and you will notice they will always sit here, they will not move. So it's going to be on these two positions all the time. Now I guess I'll give them one more above the refinery, so keep that in mind. They will always stay in those positions. Now f over here, let's say I want another small Harkonnen base. Uh, but the problem is, if I put the buildings from the same Harkonnen faction around here, remember when he talked about the the base perimeter and how they calculate their base, it's done from the top leftmost building, which would be this wind trap, up to the bottom rightmost building, which is this refinery. So we would be getting, let me see if I can show this. It's something like this and it's going up. 
this is their base parameter maybe like this or something like that but it's it's you know it, it's not what we want this we don't want them to patrol around uh, on the like in the middle of the map so oops uh, we don't want that either we also did not uh, we done we did not successfully close these Let, let's just do it quickly so we select sand cliffs and then uh, just close it real quick so to fix this issue that I just mentioned we have to use another faction this faction is going to be allied with the Harkonnen and it's going to look just like them now you remember when we talked about index allocations we we mentioned something like this and that's what it's it's gonna be used for so we're just gonna put a turret here um, where is the rocket turret I cannot see it I can't see a lot of stuff today for some reason uh large gun turret so yeah never mind it's not called like that in the latest versions it's uh, called uh, as it is in the structures editor so that's the internal name for this building it's large gun turret that's one one thing to keep in in mind i guess um so that's all we're gonna put here just three wind traps and this uh, rocket turret this is gonna be owned by the ordos so let's go ahead and uh, make sure that we set up set them up the right way so we're in the mission settings now and remember usually always stick this I don't really know uh, why would you not uh, check this because nowadays everyone's using the mission launcher and you need this INI file uh, for the mission launcher It's just a million times better to have it like this now you put a name whatever uh, we'll just call it a test mission you can set the starting music uh, usually you have a bunch of entries here I don't know why I'm not getting anything right now it might be because of how Dune Master I know Dune Master has some issues with the music files they're not named properly or something like that but let's say you are mo you are using Grand Mods Edition you are probably most likely gonna see the music files down here now play as is gonna be a Atreides don't worry about the mods or any of these for now uh, we don't care about these for now again um, mission number usually keep it to zero if you don't uh, it, it's uh, it's related to the old way of loading missions one after another so just keep it to zero Intel ID again this is for the mission launcher we don't care about it right now as a briefing we're gonna let it empty for now and for the string IDs uh, we will see when we do the events what texts we need but for now let's look at the at the factions we'll just quickly put them all to seven on the tech level for us let's say we'll give us ourselves a lot of money same for our allies I guess I guess I'll just set it pretty high for everyone so that we don't care about money for now now again we have to pay attention to alliances so we are the Atreides we play as Atreides we need to be allied with the mercenaries because they're up here and they're our friends so take it make sure uh, auto set both sides is checked so that you get the get it the both directions uh, done for you by like automatically and now Harkonnen and Ordos need to also be allied because we are going to be turning Ordos into Harkonnen now how do we do that it's very simple come over here allocation index for Ordos put it to one really that simple and even the color is gonna show you that you know this is acting as Harkonnen now this on the map is not going to change the color but don't worry about it that's how it's supposed to be so that you can actually make the difference between Harkonnen like real Harkonnen faction old buildings and the uh, Ordos faction owned buildings but you can see they changed to the Harkonnen uh, uh, to the Harkonnen texture this is not the Ordos texture anymore see the difference 
it's happening in real time so you, you get the point now uh this is uh this is pretty much what we care about in this section except the AI obviously which we will have to configure uh we don't care about the time limit or anything like that so let's see do i even have any of those set up i don't know let me see i'll find it uh, real quickly the you know the ai files that i've been talking about uh you should always try to get those if you can but i'm not sure if i actually have them right now on this new laptop i need to find it somewhere I actually don't think I have it. Well, that's uh, that's not the best thing possible. I don't think they're here. Well, let's quickly check this out. Yeah, I don't think they're here, unfortunately. Uh, but you you don't have to get those necessarily. They just help you by setting a few things over here. You can do it yourself. So for the very first thing you want is AI enabled one. That's it. With AI enabled one, you get uh, an AI, an active AI for the side. Now there is a bunch of other things you want to make sure. Like if you don't use the AI file, you want to make sure that um, if you come down here to unit build priority, you make sure that stuff like, uh, I don't know, where is the def hand? Uh, where is the def hand? This has to be zero because they can't, uh, just, they will wait until a def hand is ready to launch attacks. Uh, I guess we need to talk about how unit build priority works separately. It's a, it's a very complicated discussion, but just make sure you put these special units on zero so that they don't care about them. Uh, or the frigate as well, this is important. Just control C, put all of this stuff on zero just to be safe. You know, no, you don't need all of them. You need like the def and that's for sure. You need a frigate, but just put all of this very special stuff on zero and then you'll be fine. Uh, you can leave the carriers because they obviously need to build carriers. Also put the MCV to zero because you don't want them building MCVs. Um, and now you don't have to do this for every, um, for every AI side. You can just copy the AI and paste it to the orders and then to the mercenaries as well. And they will keep these values. Uh, so everything else is pretty okay. Uh, again, if you have the AI files, you can just uh, import AI and select one of them and it's gonna speed up the process a little bit, but this only adds like one minute. If you know what you're doing, it's like one extra minute to set it up yourself. So it's not a lot. Uh, I'm hoping he will uh, fix these in one of the future versions of this editor like fix the the unit priorities because those are really not okay so they should not be the defaults should not be like that but en enough with this so let's go ahead and see what do we need to set up here so for the Harkonnen that's our main enemy we'll just uh, this is the attack delay we don't really want to wait for them to attack us because that just takes time and we don't have it so let's just put it like very high Uh, if you don't necessarily remember what these are, go ahead and watch that tutorial again. The AI tutorial, I have explained every single one of them. Uh, let's just try to move faster with this because I know people don't really like to watch um, to watch for a very long time. Um, I'll just copy this again, just put it for everyone so that we don't have to to worry about this. So right now, for this very simple mission, we don't even need to tweak anything else about the AI. Obviously, let's say we want the mercenaries to perhaps attack really quickly, so let's just put like 3,000 here, and then, uh, I don't know, like 5,000 uh, 
in between attacks. This way they will attack very quickly because we will give them very quick reinforcements. So we are pretty much done at this point uh, with the mission settings. And this is all good, so let's go to the fun stuff, the events. How I always start missions usually is by creating, cl right-clicking, create events, and uh, do the unit spawn. So this gives them, uh, as I told you, don't put down units on the map because they will not use them to move around the base. They will just let them stay there on guard. If you do it like this, they will use those units uh, for whatever they, they consider. So they will patrol with them. So let's give them, give the mercenaries a bunch of, a bunch of stuff, not a sonic tank, let's just give it a siege tank, keep it uh, immersive. So we will just give them all of this stuff. Go to map, I'm gonna put it right here in their base, apply changes, never forget to apply changes. The condition has been created for us already, so it's timer equals one. Again, create event, unit spawn, ordos. We just want a bunch of light infantry for the Ordos because they're actually going to be Harkonnen and they will be located here. So just a bunch of light infantry so that we don't lose any of those. Uh, go to map, we'll put it here. Again, uh, hit apply and then another one for the Harkonnen. We'll give them two tanks, one of this, one of this, and two troopers, just like that. I'm gonna put it in their base, hit apply changes, and there we go, they have initial units now that they can actually use to patrol around their base. Now the next thing we want to do is to get an MCV as soon as we destroy this turret. And actually let me give us some missile tanks to kill it faster. So how do we do that? We, we will need a reinforcement event, which will be us, Atreides. Position will be here. Hit apply just so that you don't lose the position. You don't care about deploy action because we are humans. And this will be an MCV. Hit apply again just so that you don't forget uh, to save it and we need a condition so when the Ordo's rocket turret this one over here is dead we will get it how do we do that building exists Ordo's remember it's gonna look like our like Harkonnen but it is owned by the Ordo's in uh, in the background so it has to be Ordo's but since it's own, since it's uh, it's acting as Harkonnen, it's gonna be Harkonnen large gun turret. Apply changes. Double click this, and we check it. Again, what this means is, if this is checked, it's gonna be the opposite of what it says. So when this building, the Ordos Harkonnen large turret, does not exist. Hit apply changes. Now remember what I told you last time about uh, infinite loops in uh, in events. This is this. Uh, if we leave it like this right now, when we kill this turret, the game will crash with the message uh, with the error message too many deliveries. So we fix it easily by just right clicking the event and add run one's flag. That's it. So we got this going now. Uh, what we also want is to let's say let's say I want to give us a few reinforcements uh, a few Atreides combat tanks and some quads and one trooper and I want this to happen around here and I want this to happen <clears throat> um, as soon as this gun turret is destroyed and I only want it to happen a few times. Like I don't want it just once, like the MCV. The MCV is gonna be like once. I want this to happen five times. Oh, well, actually, we don't. We won't even wait for that building. We will just check it from like 
4,000. This is again in game text. You can calculate that by yourself if you want to know the real <clears throat> the real time. But usually I don't care about that. I just like kind of have a broad idea about what this is gonna feel like in game. Like this 4,000, I kind of know. It's gonna be pretty early actually, so you know. And then we will get it every two, uh, every 1,000. For uh, actually three times. Double click it, it has been added over here. Save. Now we don't need run once event because uh, the run once flag because this is not gonna run once, it's gonna run three times and then it's gonna stop. This is gonna be evaluated to false after it has triggered for uh, three times. So we don't need to, this is not gonna cause too many deliveries. All right, let's see, what else do we want? Of course, setting up mission win and mission loss because that's very important. So again, we want to win in two possible scenarios and we want them to be independent from each other. So first of all, we want to win in one scenario in which we destroy the Harkonnen base. And then the second scenario is that we want to win if we capture a certain building. Now, how do we do this? We will need two mission win events for this. First, again, base destroyed. Harkonnen and remember this over here looks like Harkonnen as well so players will think this is Harkonnen as well so you might want to duplicate this and also put it for the Ordos and you put these two over here and that's it when those two bases are destroyed you win you can also do it like this for the secondary uh, win win objective which would be let's say when we own so when player Atreides that's us owns Harkonnen wind trap we win so one of these is gonna get triggered and it's just gonna end the scenario now how do we lose as I said we will lose if there is no mercenary starport. And that's, that is order of starport for the mercenaries. It is smuggler starport for the smuggler faction. Keep that in mind. But I'm pretty sure you do you do know that because it looks very differently. So order of starport, again, double click. There you go. You don't have to set run once on this because once you win or lose, the game stops. So you don't care about uh, about it getting triggered a million times but if it wasn't uh, a, a win event yes it would get triggered constantly after these uh, conditions are met so this is a, these are our mission win and loss conditions um, did I actually do the MCV I don't remember I think I did yes there it is so let's see what else do we want Yes, we want some reinforcements for the mercenaries because, you know, they are the mercenaries. That's how it works. They have to get stuff from the starboard. So we'll give them quite, quite very often and early reinforcements. Oh, where is it? Let's give them a missile tank as well. Now take your sweet time with this. Just give them whatever you want. It apply changes. And now we want a timer. And you can use a timer with percentage because it's a starport delivery, delivery and it's not going to happen if they lose their starport. So you don't have to combine it with a building exists. You don't. You just simply don't. Um, let's just give give them uh, every, every 2000. It's going to overload their base. This is very, very, a very small time frame. But we want them to get a lot of stuff so we can actually witness them. Or maybe just, no, that's just way too much. And uh, just quickly, I just noticed this. I forgot to take this. Make sure you you do it properly so building does not exist. The mercenary starport we lose. Pay attention to the checkbox. I keep telling you, sometimes I, I don't, uh, I miss it as well. And then you start the mission and you lose instantly. And you're like, well, what happened? Because you don't see any error. You don't see anything. So you're just 
have to come back here and look through the events and see what what could have possibly happened um this is fine and these are fine as well so yeah we're we're good to go about those now let's just make sure that the starport delivery has uh has this condition there and now I guess just for for fancy reasons we can add side side annihilated Harkonnen and what we want to do is first of all let's just say I don't want the units because I really don't I can just come and go on and remove them and I also want them to I want this message displayed when the Ordo space is destroyed as well because remember they are acting as Harkonnen they will look red on the map so now we got the side annihilated messages too Let's just add one for the mercs as well. And uh, I believe we are pretty much set. I don't think there's anything else we need to look at for now. So we got we got the, the map markers here. This is the spawn. Uh, this is the reinforcement with the MCV that we're going to get. Uh, when that uh, rocket turret is destroyed this uh, is the periodical reinforcement with the uh, interval so but you can just go ahead and quick launch it or press F8 at this point and you can test the mission now you might miss something or you might forget something like I forgot to check that checkbox there and you you just come back very easily to the editor and you change whatever is not working yes sir yes, so you sir. see we are allied to the mercs yes sir let's make sure yes, we don't sir. lose this yes sir and Standing we just come by. down here kill this let's really go. quickly you see the AI responds to it because they have an AI assigned to them we get the MCV and there are Standing two ways by. we can win this. So, yes, as I said, one way was to just options. capture yes, one of these. Let's go. Waiting orders. And we will just simply yes, capture this wind trap, and, and we should win. Waiting just orders. like that. Over and out. Enemy building captured. New construction. Yes, see, mission accomplished. That was one way to win it. Now we will go again, and we will actually try to kill that base down there that's owned by the Harkonnen instead of capturing that Commander. just to see and we'll yes, also see the rest of the events reinforcements have arrived reporting let me just Commander. fix this it might be a bit too much uh reporting. and that's much better reporting Commander. we'll deploy we'll build a base we'll kill this or actually we can capture those I guess yes, oh wait no yeah that's the event see I even forgot what I did Commander. we cannot capture those so let's we'll have to kill them let's go. Construction complete. New construction options. now I maybe I forgot one or yes, two things on that list that I showed yes, you at the start but most of the stuff that I wanted to showcase um, is here maybe i think i've done one or two things differently as i presented them on that notepad but the ideas are the same so new construction options we have a lot of money you can just like go ahead and see the mercs already moving they have a very low uh, attack strength i believe so they are attacking with just one tank that's one one thing you might want to look at when you start uh, when you modify the default AI values see there are the reinforcements this was the first one this is the second one and there should be one more because we capped it at three and there's the starport deliveries that they keep getting pre uh, pretty often we don't care about harvesters or, or anything else we just yes, want to get this yes, and I think we can actually go because I didn't give them pretty much anything in the yes, base 
So we should be able to kill them with this. See, they are building, so they will uh, try to attack me at some point. But after like 12,000 ticks or whatever I set it. Which is still some time in the future at this point. They won't get to do it at all because I'm going to kill them right now. And you see the mercs are coming. They built an engineer because I forgot to remove the engineer uh, build priority on their AI list. So that's another thing you want to wanna keep in mind. So as I said, just take your time. Uh, take your time with that AI uh, and their variables. There's one building here that we forgot yes, about, is the refinery. See the siege tank has not moved, because it was on guard mode. And there we have, the mission is over, we won. Now very quickly to fix those issues you have seen. Mercs, you come, uh, come down here to unit build priorities. And you look for the engineer. And you put it to zero. Just like that. Uh, for the attack strength, as I said, they were attacking with like three troopers or like one tank. And that's obviously not going to do a lot. We can put this to like 50. Let's say 50 protect strength. This is for harvesters. Nobody's going to attack their harvesters. We don't care at this point. Defense strength, we're going to put this very low so that they can... They are going to be very, very aggressive. Let's put it to 60 and let's see the difference. You will definitely see a difference, I believe. They will use quite a lot of their units that they have available for attack. So you see how easy it is? You just hit qu uh, quick test and you are right into the game you don't have to like it doesn't take literally, literally any time you can just do it all over again and you can try things out see how they work so it's it's pretty easy to test what you're doing that's my point now let's wait for a for a few reinforcements for them and then really soon they should attack and they should do do more than just one tank now remember I believe there's also, I think I forgot, yeah, to set their guard uh, group size, which is also what uh, what they will use to patrol around their base. And since that is pretty high by default, you might, they might not send a lot of units at the very start uh, to attack. But as they keep getting more reinforcements, they will have a lot of units to defend their base with, and they will... Uh, then start sending even bigger attacks. But you can fix that and we will have a look at it uh, real soon, how we can also fix that. It's pretty easy, you just have to change the guard group size, but I forgot about it because I don't usually play with the default values, I, I always import uh, an AI file. But I guess this is better to do it this way so you guys can see if you don't have those AI files to just import then uh, at least you now see how yes, how you can uh, Ready, change it by yourself. Ready, Order, sir. Ready, so I guess we're still waiting for for them to attack. They probably did not fill their uh, guard group size yet. Yes, sir. Over and out. Yes, sir. So maybe to avoid wasting more time, let's change it really quickly. So you come to mercenaries and you look for guard group size, which is this. It's 1,000 by default. That's a lot. I can tell you right now, even something like 800 is a lot. Something more decent is around 500 or 600. Depends on how much, uh, how many units you want them to have patrolling around their base. If you want a more defensive AI, you can use values like 100, uh, like 800 or 900. It's totally fine. But if you want a very aggressive AI, you need to, to use very low values. So let's try with 50. This is pretty crazy, actually. But it should help us to get the, that big attack thing going. Yes, sir. Standing by. Let's go. Standing by. Yes, commander. 
Unit lost. Reporting. Reinforcements have arrived. Yes, Commander. Reporting. Commander. Standing by. So we're just basically waiting for them to get some units going. I did not. I also did not modify their unit build ratio. I didn't change a lot of uh, a, lot, a lot of the uh, properties for the AI. Uh, but you know, you can just, as I said, take your time, get the right values. This was just like a tutorial. I just tried to get it pretty fast, as fast as possible. I guess I totally failed because we're. We're taking more time now to just tweak settings so we can make our points instead of uh, doing it at the very start. So as I said, always take your time. Don't hurry up like me. See, look at their... They're sending pretty much everything they have except for one tank because that 50 is a very low value. So this tank is enough to fill their, uh, their base, uh, their guard group size by itself. So we'll just go ahead and help them, I guess. They sent everything they had and they will do it pretty often as they get... Uh, I believe the time between attacks was like 5,000 5, or 6,000, something like that. But they will not need another attack because this is probably going to be over really soon. So we are not going to wait for it. Uh, we already saw the win event. So this is how you do a very basic mission. You can also, let's say, you add, uh, for flavor, you can do something like when you get the reinforcements for the Atreides. Uh, this was one thing uh, I, wa I had on the notepad file, but I forgot about it. Text messages. It's really easy to add, like whenever the mercs, uh, where is it? Whenever the mercs get this, uh, get the reinforcements, you want to have let's say you want a message in which they uh in which you you know that they get they get units i'll just save it and as i said go back here it's the best way to do it and add a new entry uh mercenary just do it like this and oops then you come back here you use uh, this entry and then, well, in this case, you don't want this message to show up when, uh, I mean, if they have no starboard. So you will actually have to use this one. I don't actually need a new condition. I have this one right here. So if this exists and every 3000 ticks, and there you go, you're going to see this message and just to test it really quickly. We'll do a quick launch again. Waiting orders. Reporting. Commander. Yes, Commander. So we should see that message popping up as soon as they get their first starport drop, Commander. which should be pretty soon Commander. because, again, yes, 3000 is not a lot of ticks. Let's go. Commander. You are gonna get it pretty fast. Standing by. New construction options. Should happen any moment now, really soon. You wanna like get used to the game ticks, you can add the timer up there in the corner and then you can, you know, check that. See, mercenary reinforcements have arrived and it did not repeat all over the place uh, because, um, as I said, remember how conditions are evaluated, this only gets evaluated every th uh, 3,000 ticks because of the timer uh, set on percentage. So that's that's pretty much about it for this tutorial. Uh, this is a very basic mission. I did forget it, to set up some AI stuff over here as you saw. Uh, but as I said, take your time, go through the AI. Uh, perhaps use an AI file if you want. If you just can't find the AI files, just come over on Discord and ask me and I'll give it to you. Um, and uh, yeah, just as I said, take your time, play around, just quick test every time you do a change, just quick launch, it's very easy. 
and you'll get it in no time trust me just try your try to play around with this all right so i hope this was helpful uh we will see what's coming up in the next uh tutorial series i'm not sure exactly maybe i'll talk about some tips and tricks or some possible issues you might encounter when you make your missions but i don't know for now we will we will see so yeah thank you for watching and i really hope this helped you